Hi everyone, welcome to another video for research design and analysis. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the R squared statistic as a measure of unexplained variance. Now this gets a lot of use in regression models, um, and it's also gonna be very important for the calculation of different types of effect sizes later on. So we wanna introduce it here, um, but we're gonna to continue to build on this statistic throughout, throughout our different modules. So first off, for understanding R squared, which is also sometimes written as a capital R squared and is also sometimes referred to as the coefficient of determination, um, all of these generally refer to the same statistic, which is that it's a measure of the variance in Y that is being explained by X. Now, computationally, in, in the case of a simple regression, um, R squared is just the square of the per Pearson correlation coefficient, R. Um, conceptually, however, it's, it's much more than just that simple exponent because the R squared represents the variance in Y that is explained by X. Uh, and understanding how R squared relates to the variance and therefore to the sum of squared errors is not only important for interpreting simple regression models like we talked about in the last video, but it's also going to be important for understanding future concepts um, uh, as, as our regression models get more and more complicated. So first off, let's, let's think about the sum of squared errors right, as a measure of the variance. If you remember back in some of our earlier videos, we talked about the calculation of the sum of squared errors, the variance, and the standard deviation in detail. Right now, we're going to be thinking about the sum of squared errors in our outcome variable, right, our dependent variable, which is y. Okay, so the total variance, or the total sum of squared errors in y, is the sum of each y minus the mean of y squared. So we'd take each observation minus the mean, square it, we'd add all of those squared deviates together to get the total sum of squared errors for y. If we wanted to turn this then you know, into a, a, a variance, we'd divide the sum of squared errors by n minus 1, and if we wanted to turn that into a standard deviation, then we would take the square root. But we're going to stop short of calculating the variance and the standard deviation right now and just focus on the sum of squared errors because the R squared reflects the proportion of that sum of squared errors that is accounted for by the X variable. So the, if you're thinking ahead a little bit then, you might already be thinking about, well, what's left unexplained by X? And the idea then with that one minus R squared would represent the unexplained variance, right? Because there's some total amount of variation in Y, which is the total sum of squared errors. We're going to explain a proportion of it Right, which is reflected in the R squared. Uh, and then any part of it that is unexplained would be the difference between 100% and the part that's explained. So to get at the unexplained variance, we just have to do one minus R squared, and that will tell us about the proportion of the sum of squared errors that remains unexplained by the X variable. So how do we measure this variance and where does it come from, right? Well, in the simple case, when we're thinking about just one variable, we've already done this calculation before, right? We know how to get the total sum of squared errors. But what we really wanna think about now is how do we calculate the sum of squared errors explained, right? And how do we calculate the sum of squared errors that remain unexplained? Um, and you know, obviously if we already know what R squared is, then that's easy to do. But actually we wanna approach this from the opposite direction and show you how we can calculate R squared based on the sum of squared errors. In the previous videos, we talked about walking through to calculate the correlation coefficient to get R squared. This is essentially a, a, another path to the same place, right? We wanna talk about how to get the R squared in terms of the reduction in the sum of squared errors. Um, and that's going to be very important for us later on, especially when we deal with models that have multiple variables in them, because we wanna be able to say out of the total amount of variance, what is getting explained by each of our unique, unique predictors. So as you might recall, the mean is a number that gives us the smallest sum of squared errors for any single value, right? So for any one number we pick, the mean is always going to give us the smallest sum of squared errors. And so this is the starting point in our calculation of the sum of squared errors total, right? You can think about that if we have uh, here we're regressing some post-test scores onto some pre-test scores. If these things were independent and I just estimated the mean post-test score for everyone, I would get some value for the total sum of squared errors, right? And if I don't use any other information and I make an unconditional prediction, that is to say, I'm just gonna guess the mean for everyone, this is kind of our benchmark for how much variability is there in the Y variable. 
Now, if we actually make a conditional prediction, right? And we say, well, we want to now, rather than predict the average for everyone, we want to predict post-test scores as a function of pre-test scores. Um, now we're going to have to change up our model a little bit because now we're not just estimating the mean for everyone. We're actually making a specific prediction of y based on some value of x. Right, so we'll have our regression model where we say, well, we're going to have an intercept and we're going to have a slope and we're going to multiply the slope times the pretest score. That's going to give us a predicted value of y. And again, we represent predicted values with this little y hat. Okay, so we're going to take all of our predictions for each observation. And what we're going to do is we're going to see the distance of those predictions from the mean of y. Essentially, right, how, are we, how different is our prediction from the mean? If our prediction is basically the same as the mean, so that suggests that x and y don't have a very strong relationship. If, however, where you are on x actually changes what we predict for y, then the difference between the predicted value and the mean value uh, is actually going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, and then what we can do is we can take each of these deviations, square them, sum them together, and that will give us the sum of squared errors explained by the regression. So this sum of squared errors explained by the regression, right, uh, is, is the deviation between our predicted y values and the average y value. Um, and, and again, this gets bigger, right, the more and more our prediction actually depends on x. Because if x and y are independent, then our predicted values are going to get closer and closer to the average y. Um, and that might also make a little more sense in a second if that feels confusing, because the other thing that we're going to look at here is the sum of squared error of the residuals, which is to say, you know, how much error is left behind. So we, again, we're going to make a prediction about y based on the value of x. That's our model. And as you recall, right, we have this general setup of our data is equal to the model plus some amount of error. And our error is the difference between the actual y value and what we predicted. So if x does not predict y well, we expect the difference between y and our prediction, our predicted value to be large. So to get the sum of squared error of the residuals, which is to say how much of the sum of the squared error is left behind from our model, we're going to take each y value, subtract off the corresponding predicted value from the model, square it, and then we're going to sum those squared residuals. And the sum of squared error of the residuals tells us about the difference between our predictions and the observed values. And when x makes good predictions, this sum of squared errors should be small. So we can think about this as different pieces that all add up to the one total sum of squared errors. Right? So we have our sum of squared errors total, which again is just how much does y vary around its own mean. And within that, we're going to have the sum of squared errors of the regression, and then we're going to have the sum of squared errors of the residuals. Because this is how much sum of squared error was explained by our regression. This is how much sum of square we had left over. And they have to add up to the sum of squared errors total because this was the total amount of variability that we had to work with in the beginning. So conceptually, sum of squared errors of the regression is what is explained, right? Sum of squared errors of the residuals is what is left unexplained. So our r squared then, based on the sums of squared errors calculation, is the sum of squared errors from the regression divided by the sum of squared errors total, right? The proportion of the variance in y that is explained by x. Uh, uh, so, sorry, this is the, I should say, this is the squared error in y that is explained by x out of the total squared error in y, which leaves us then with the proportion of the variance in y that is being explained by x. Now we can see this a little more clearly, right? If we go back to this relationship where we're looking at post-test scores as a function of pre-test scores, uh, this dashed line represents um, uh, the mean that we were using originally in order to get our calculation of the sum of squared errors total. And this, this solid blue line represents a line that I've actually just drawn through the data. Now we're calculating a residual as the difference between each real data point, right, represented by the black dots, and the y hats, or our model predictions, which are represented by the, the blue line, right, because our model predictions all fall along this line. Now the difference between each score and our model prediction is then represented by the, the pink line, which is the residual term, and we can square those residuals to get the sum of squared error of the residuals. So we have our sum of squared errors explained by the regression, we have the sum of squared error of the residuals, right, the part that's left over, and then we have the sum of squared errors uh, total, right, which was the total amount of error that we had to work with in the beginning. Now, this is a line that I just drew, but conceptually, as you might recall, if we actually use the equation for our ordinary least squares regression, 
it's going to have the special property of producing the slope and the intercept that give us the smallest sum of squared errors. So you can see that a little more clearly here, right, where this is the actual ordinary least squares regression line. Its intercept is a little bit higher, its slope is a little bit flatter than the line that I drew before. Uh, and now we're getting a different set of predictions, which when compared with the original data give us a different set of residuals, right? Uh, and when I square those residuals, my sum of squared error of the residuals actually goes down, and therefore the variability being explained by the regression goes up. And this then, this value of the slope and intercept is the special set of values that give us the largest sum of squared error explained by the regression and leave us with the smallest sum of squared error of the residuals. So in the previous videos, we discussed the equations that actually give us these terms. Uh, and if you're interested in, in, you know, kind of, okay, exactly how do we settle on those values or how do we kind of connect these two ideas? Um, that, that we can solve for a slope that will give us the smallest sum of squared errors. Uh, that's a little bit of an advanced topic for a future video, um, but hopefully at least conceptually you can understand that in much the same way that the mean is the one value that will give us the smallest total sum of squared errors, by using ordinary least squares regression we can get a slope and an intercept that give us the specific values that explain the most error in this bivariate relationship. And now we can find that slope and the intercept, but we have some important questions that remain. We talked a little bit about this in the previous video, but we want to talk about this in more detail, which is, you know, how can we really tell if the intercept is statistically different from zero, and how can we tell if the slope is statistically different from zero?